Hello, this video includes calculations for Ka and Kb. So we're going to talk a little bit more about um, acids and bases in general, and then we're going to look at um, some problems. So let's look at this generic equation here. This is just some generic weak acid. Remember that all acids have hydrogen in them as their positive ion. A is just standing for whatever the anion might be. And we're looking at the acid ionization. We're putting it into water. We know that uh, Bronsted-Lowry acids donate protons. So this proton or this hydrogen ion is gonna go from the acid to the water. We're gonna produce hydronium ions and A ions. Now in the reverse direction, the proton or the hydrogen ion is going from the hydronium to the anion. So the hydronium is the acid in the reverse direction and A is the base in the reverse direction. And if HA is our weak acid, after it gives off its proton or its hydrogen ion, what's left over is the conjugate base. So A minus is the conjugate base. And when the water acts like a base, it's accepting a proton and what it becomes is the conjugate acid. So HA and A minus are a conjugate acid base pair and water and hydronium are a conjugate acid base pair. Now, we're gonna establish an equilibrium. That's why the arrow is going in two directions. And for any equilibrium, we can write a K expression. Any K expression is the concentration of the products over the concentration of the reactants raised to the power of the coefficient in the balanced equation. And all the coefficients are what's? And we should also notice that water is not included in the K expression because water is a liquid. And when we look at um, K expressions, we do not include solids and liquids. So the concentration of the hydronium ion times the concentration of the hydroxide ion divided by the concentration of the original acid. And we looked at some problems on Tuesday where we were given the concentrations and we wanted to calculate K, or we were given K and we wanted to calculate the equilibrium concentration. So the problem kind of works both ways. But whenever we do these kinds of problems, the first step, we have to write that equilibrium equation. And then from that, we have to write a K expression. And then once we write the K expression, then we just have to figure out where we go from there. Now, if we look at bases, okay, here is a generic base. Okay, I'm just going to label it B. It could be any base. We looked at weak bases at, as typically having nitrogen in them, amine groups, because of that lone pair of electrons that tends to um, accept or attract hydrogen ions. And if we look at a base ionization, we take that um, base and we add it to water. Well, this doesn't have a hydrogen in it that it can donate. Okay, that's why it's not an acid but it will accept a hydrogen ion or a proton from the water. So this time the hydrogen ion is going from the water to the base. So this is our base. Now water is acting like an acid. When the hydrogen ion uh, goes over to our base, we're gonna produce HB plus, this is our conjugate acid, and when the water gives up its hydrogen ion or its proton, we end up with hydroxide. So this is our conjugate base. Now, the system's at equilibrium. 
we can write K expressions for any equilibrium. Now notice I wrote A here because we're talking about an acid and B here because we're talking about a base. We looked at KW uh, the other day, which is what we can use to relate um, hy hydronium ion to hydroxide ion. So it's calculated the same way, no matter what kind of K we're dealing with, K in terms of concentrations, K in terms of partial pressures, KW, KA, KB, it doesn't matter. It's always the concentration of the products over the concentration of the reactants raised to the power of the coefficient in the balanced equation. But again, and I should have probably put the states here, it is here. Since water is a liquid, it's not included in the K expression. Again, we can see problems where we're given the equilibrium concentrations and we want to calculate K, or we're given K and we want to calculate the equilibrium concentrations. The problem can be worked um, either way once we write our K expression. Now, when we talk about the strength of acids or bases, the larger the K value, the stronger the acid or base. But there are other ways that we can talk about the strength of an acid or a base. And one of the ways is by talking about the percent ionization. And what we mean by that is if we have our weak acid here, what percentage of it goes through this acid ionization? Okay, well, to calculate that, we would take how much of it ionized and divide it by the original concentration and then multiply it by 100 to make it a percent. The higher the percent ionization, the stronger the acid. So the more of the acid that becomes ions, the stronger the acid is, okay? Uh, the lower the percent ionization, the less of this acid ionizes and the weaker the acid is. So let's look at a calculation. <clears throat> Okay, it says calculate the percent ionization of a 0 0.100 molar solution of acetic acid with a pH of two. All right, well, we're trying to find percent ionization. So here's our equation. We need the hydronium ion concentration at equilibrium and we need the acid concentration. Well, we're given the acid concentration, okay? So we're given HA. We're not directly given the hydronium ion concentration, but we are given the pH. And as we did in our warm-up, we know that we can calculate the hydronium ion concentration from the pH. So our first step would be to calculate the hydronium ion concentration. And then once we do that, we can calculate the percent ionization. So let's calculate, I don't think I did it, sorry. If we take 10 to the negative 2.87. I should have showed you where this number comes from. Sorry, I didn't put that in there. Take 10 raised to the negative 2.87. And that gives us this value here. Okay, and I should have shown the work on that. So make sure that you do that. Once we know the hydronium ion concentration and we know the uh, concentration of the acid, we can find out how much of that acid ionized. And the number is really small. The smaller this number, the weaker the acid. And in many cases, we're going to see that this number here is at least less than 5%. And oftentimes, it's even less than 1%. Again, the smaller this percent ionization, 
the weaker the acid is. So we have our we have our uh, generic acid ionization equation. Okay, here's our acid reacting with water. We're producing hydronium and our conjugate base. Always want to write a K expression. Okay, because that's going to tell us where we're going to go from there. And because it's an acid, it's a Ka expression. And we want to designate that it's Ka because eventually we're going to have to figure out whether we're looking at a Ka or a Kb problem. And if we label it, it makes it a little bit easier to do. Let's look at the reverse reaction. Okay, we've got our base reacting with water to produce that conjugate acid and conjugate base. We're just reversing. The increase in hydroxide ion is what makes this a base. So now we can write a Kb expression, a okay, products over reactants raised to the power of the coefficient of the balanced equation, but again, eliminating that liquid water out of there. Now let's say that we add these two reactions together. So we've got HA plus water plus A minus plus water on our reactant side. We've got hydronium plus A minus plus HA plus hydroxide on our product side. And what we're gonna notice is that HA is on the reactant side and the product side. It's gonna cancel out. We wanna write a net equation. And A minus is on the reactant side and the product side, so we can cancel that out. And our net equation, we've got two waters. So H2O yields hydronium and hydroxide. Now we could write this as H2O plus H2O. I just put the two there. Um, you can write it either way. And we know that if we add two reactions together, we would multiply the K values to get our equilibrium constant. So Ka times Kb equals Kw, because this is the new equilibrium that we established. And it's the hydronium times the hydroxide, which by definition is Kw. So Kw, we know that's one times 10 to the minus 14. It'll always be that. If we're given Ka in a problem, we could calculate Kb. Or if we were given Kb, we can calculate Ka. And this is what's going to enable us to switch back and forth uh, later on in some problems we're going to look at. Again, we know that as long as we're at 25 degrees Celsius, Kw is 1 times 10 to the minus 14. Remember that temperature is the only factor that affects the value of K. And it will change depending on whether it's an endothermic or an exothermic process. But changing concentrations won't affect K. Changing pressures doesn't affect K, but changing temperatures does. This is kind of a summary of all of the relationships that we talked about with respect to hydronium, hydroxide, pH, and pOH. Now, I will tell you that this is written just a little bit differently than the way we've written it before, because instead of having hydronium, this little picture here says hydrogen ion. Well, they're interchangeable, okay? And for shorthand, we typically just write hydrogen ions, okay? The issue is that hydrogen ions really don't ever exist, okay? They're really just a proton and they're gonna be attracted to the lone pairs of electrons on the oxygen in water molecules and form hydronium ions. So we could write this as hydrogen ions. We could write this as hydronium ions. It means the same thing. This is kind of a shorthand 
for H3O plus. So if we know the um, hydrogen ion concentration or the hydronium ion concentration, if we take the negative log, that would give us pH. Or if we know the pH, we can take 10 to the negative pH and calculate hydrogen ion. Now, if we know the hydrogen ion, we can divide it into Kw and figure out hydroxide. Or if we know hydroxide, we can divide it into Kw and calculate hydronium or hydrogen ion. Okay, if we know the hydroxide ion, we can take the negative log of that and figure out pOH. And if we know the pOH, we can take 10 to the negative pOH and that'll give us hydroxide. And if we know the pH and we subtract it from 14, that gives us the pOH. And if we know the pOH and subtract it from 14, that gives us the pH. So this is an excellent little schematic here that summarizes all of the interrelationships involved with pH. Just to go through the equations again, pH equals the negative log of the hydronium ion. Again, we can say hydrogen ion, or we can say hydronium ion. This is really more true to what we have in a solution. This is more of a shorthand, okay? So the hydronium ion is 10 to the negative pH. If we want pOH, we'll take the negative log of hydroxide. And if we want hydroxide, it's 10 to the negative pH, pOH, sorry. pH and pOH equals 14. Ka times Kb equals Kw. Now, this here is just a table. In no way do you have to memorize any of the numbers that are on this table. Either you'd be given the table or within the context of the question, it would give you the Ka value. And remember again, the larger the Ka value, the stronger the acid. The weaker the Ka value, or sorry, the smaller the Ka value, the weaker the acid. So that being said, look at these Ka values and tell me which one of these acids is the weakest acid. Which one would have the smallest percent ionization given these Ka values? We just need to really just look at the exponents. Okay, we don't even really need to look at the number in front. This is hydrocyanic acid and it's 10 to the minus 10. This is the smallest of all the Ka values. So it's the weakest acid. Now, down along the bottom, again, it's giving you some Kb values for some bases. These are all weak bases. And if we look, they all contain amine or nitrogens with those lone pairs of electrons to accept hydrogen ions. And again, the smaller the Kb value, the weaker the base. Which is the weakest base out of all the ones that were given in the table? Aniline is the weakest of all of those because it has the smallest Kb value. Again, we don't have to memorize those numbers in any way, shape, or form. It would be given to us in the question, and we would just have to know what to do with those numbers. So let's talk about what we would, in fact, do with those numbers. This question says, this is hydrogen sulfate, okay? The hydrogen sulfate ion, which is a weak acid because it's got hydrogen in it that it can donate, is used in some household cleaners. Okay, well, if it's an acid and we put it into water, 
we're going to have that acid ionization. This hydrogen ion is going to go from here to here. So the conjugate base of hydrogen sulfate is a sulfate ion. Okay, we got rid of the H and we got rid of a plus one charge because we're getting rid of a hydrogen ion. Where did the hydrogen ion go? It went to the water. So the conjugate acid is hydronium. Okay, it tells us it's a weak acid. It's also not one of the six weak acids that we listed. Sulfuric acid is H2SO4, but HSO4 minus one, this is not a strong acid. So the arrow is going in two directions. It says, what is the acid ionization constant? This is just asking us, what is Ka? What is the acid ionization constant for this acid if an equilibrium mixture has the following composition? I don't know what that's there for. So we're at equilibrium. It's telling us that. Okay, if it doesn't tell us, we wouldn't know that. But we're at equilibrium. Here are the concentrations. We want to calculate Ka. So we need to write our K expression first. Please don't skip that part. I can just do that part in my head, okay? Because the problems are gonna get increasingly more difficult. And as, if you have a good foundation of how to solve these problems, they're not gonna become as difficult if you show all your work, okay? So step number one, we wanna write that Ka expression. Products over reactants raised to the power of the coefficient in the balanced equation. Now that we have the K expression, it gives us these concentrations. It asks us for Ka. So we're gonna plug those numbers in and then put them into the calculator and solve for Ka. So go ahead and do that. One of the things I've noticed on um, tests uh, when I go through and I look at the work that you submit, oftentimes you have the work worked out right, and then you did something in the calculator wrong and you get the wrong answer. Okay, it's one of the reasons why I have you show your work and then I plug it into the calculator and say, well, that's not the answer you should have gotten. So, you know, make sure you're practicing the calculator skills as we do these, and then it's going to be less likely you're going to make those math errors on your test. So plug in the numbers and then put them into the calculator and calculate Ka. Okay, so we're gonna plug in 0.13 for sulfate. We're gonna plug in 0 0.027 for hydronium. And we're gonna plug in 0.29 for our hydrogen sulfate ion. Now it's just a plug and chug. And you can leave that as 0 0.012. You know, the numbers become pretty small, so we tend to write them in scientific notation. So 1.2 times 10 to the minus two would be a better way to write that answer. It's very similar to what we did in the last chapter when we were looking at kind of general equilibrium problems. The only thing that's different now is that one of the reactants is an acid and the other is water. It's still just an equilibrium problem. All right, so let's look at a different version of the same kind of problem. So we have a 1.0 molar solution of hydrofluoric acid, and it has a pH of 1.59. We want to calculate the acid ionization constant. We want to calculate Ka for this acid. All right, first thing I want you to do, write the equation for the acid ionization. Okay, HF plus H2O yields. Okay, practice that part first. What are the reactants? What are the products? What's the equilibrium? Okay, we've got HF reacting with water, okay? So the hydrogen ion is going from here to here. 
So we're producing hydronium and fluoride. In this reaction, what's the conjugate base? Okay, the conjugate base is fluoride. So next thing we wanna do is write our K expression. And since it's an acid, we're writing a Ka expression. Do that part next. Products over reactants raised to the power of the coefficient in the balanced equation. So what we're going to do now is we're going to write an ice chart. Just add a little bit onto this. Okay, so remember that it stands for initial change and equilibrium. So we've got 1.0 is the concentration of HF. There isn't any hydronium and there isn't any fluoride to begin with. It's a weak acid. So just a small amount of it goes through this acid ionization and just a small amount of hydronium and fluoride are produced. So at equilibrium, we have 1.0 minus X, X and X. All right, now, how do we find out what X is? Well, X is the hydronium ion concentration. Well, it doesn't give us the hydronium ion concentration, but it does give us the pH. And we can figure out the hydronium ion from the pH. So 10 to the negative pH gives us our hydronium ion concentration. So X is 0 0.0257. Well, that means that's what this number is. It means it's what this number is. We can figure out what this number is. So we plug our numbers in. Now, 0 0.0257 times 0 0.0257, I just wrote it squared, so I didn't have to write all the numbers out again. Okay, but it's this number is the same as this number, which equals X. So 0 0.0257 squared divided by one minus 0 0.0257. Now, make sure you plug that in the calculator and you get 6.78 times 10 to the minus four, because sometimes the order of operation here kind of gets screwed up and you don't get the right answer. Okay, might be a good idea to put parentheses around the numbers in the denominator. Maybe that would help a little bit. So let's look at another problem. Okay, this time, we just have some weak monoprotic acid. It doesn't tell us what it is. So often we would use HA, sorry, HA to stand for that weak monoprotic acid, generic. It gives us the concentration of the acid and it gives us the pH. And we want to calculate the acid ionization constant. We want to calculate Ka. So let's use HA as our weak monoprotic acid. First thing, write that acid ionization reaction. All right, so HA plus H2O yields hydronium and A minus, and we have that arrow in two directions because it's a weak acid at equilibrium. So now using this new concentration, write an ice chart, just like we did before. It's the same kind of problem. Use the last problem as a model for this problem. Remember I stands for initial, C stands for change, which just comes from the stoichiometry and they're all one-to-one -one ratios. And E stands for what the values would be at equilibrium. Okay, make your ice chart. All right, it's really the only thing that's different from 
the last problem is instead of having 0 0.10, we have 0 0.12. Okay, so 0 0.12 for the initial concentration of our acid, zero and zero. Okay, a little bit of that acid is going to react. We're going to produce a little bit of hydronium and a little bit of A minus. These numbers are going to be the same. And then at equilibrium, we have 0 0.12 minus X, X and X. Now, there's nothing in this middle section here because liquid water, we can't talk about it in terms of concentrations. So we just leave this blank, okay? The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna calculate what X equals, okay? Well, X equals the hydronium ion concentration. And we can calculate that from the pH. So take the pH and solve for the hydronium ion concentration which equals X. Okay, so to calculate the hydronium ion, which equals X, we would take 10 to the negative pH or 10 to the negative 3.39. Okay, since we've got, uh, actually this isn't really right because we should only have two significant digits here. That's not good. Um, that has too many significant digits. Um, but that's our X, which is the hydronium ion and A minus. And it's how much of HA went through this auto, this uh, acid ionization. So write your K expression, your KA expression, plug in the numbers and solve for Ka. Now again, just like before, I didn't write 4.07 times 10 to the minus four times 4.07 times 10 to the minus four. I just wrote 4.07 squared. It means the same thing. These two numbers are equal to each other so I can just square the number and write it once. We're gonna start to simplify some work. <clears throat> because the numbers are going to get a little bit harder. And wherever we can kind of make the math easier, we're going to do that. Okay. If we were to look at this question, okay, X is really 0 0.000407. Okay. 0 0.000407. And if we were to take that number, and subtract it from 0.12 and leave two significant digits, it actually doesn't change the number. So because X is so much smaller than our initial concentration, we can actually drop the X from this part of our expression. It's insignificant. So really, because X is insignificant relative to the initial concentration, if we get rid of the X and just make this 0.12, it doesn't change the answer. So as long as X is super small, we can eliminate it from the math and it will certainly make life easier later on. It's actually going to remove quadratics from problems later on. So now let's do some comparing. Okay, we're going to calculate the pH of a 0 0.100 molar hydrochloric acid solution. Now, what we need to remember is that hydrochloric acid is a strong acid. Okay, we identified it the other day, hydrochloric, hydrobromic, hydroiodic, sulfuric, perchloric, and nitric are strong acids. So what does that mean? It means that it has such a large K value that there's no equilibrium that's established. The hydronium ion concentration that's calculated or that's measured 
will be equal to the original hydrochloric acid concentration. So if we were to take hydrochloric acid and put it into water, it's gonna act like an acid. It's gonna donate its hydrogen ion to water. We're gonna produce chloride and hydronium ions, but look at the arrow. Okay, the arrow goes in one direction. So the reaction goes to completion. So the concentration of the HCl will equal the concentration of the hydronium ion. So if we know the concentration of the hydronium ion, we can calculate the pH of the solution. So the pH equals the negative log of the hydronium ion, which in this case is the negative log of 0 0.100, which gives us 1.000 for our pH. Now, remember that if we have three significant digits in the concentration, we should have three decimal places in the pH, which I goofed up on on the last problem. Now, let's say that we have a 0 0.100 molar solution, but this time it's for CH3COOH, which is acetic acid. Now, acetic acid is not a strong acid, okay? It's a weak acid. That means that if we wanna calculate the pH, we're gonna to have to do an equilibrium problem. So here's our acetic acid, H or CH3COOH and water. The hydrogen from the acid is gonna be donated from the acid to the water. We're gonna produce acetate ions and hydronium ions, but because it's a weak acid, this arrow is going in two directions. And at equilibrium, we're gonna have mostly acetic acid and just a little bit of acetate and hydronium. So it's in equilibrium. We need to make our ice chart. Okay, I stands for initial, and we have 0 0.100 for the molarity of the acetic acid, and there's no acetate and no hydronium to begin with. A little bit of that acid is gonna go through the acid ionization. Most of it's gonna stay in the form of acetic acid. And we're gonna produce a little bit of acetate and a little bit of hydronium. So at equilibrium, we'd have one or 0 0.100 minus X, X and X. Now, the next thing we wanna do is we want to write our K expression. So products of reactants raised to the power of the coefficient of the balance equation. So writing the acid ionization equation making an ice chart and writing a K expression, all super important things in any type of weak acid or weak base type of a problem. Now, in this case, we don't know the equilibrium values. We're not given the pH. We actually wanna calculate the pH. And it didn't say in the question, it should have, but that must mean we know Ka. And because Ka is small, X is gonna be insignificant, okay? Anytime the concentration of A divided by Ka is greater than 100, X is insignificant. And in pretty much all the problems we're gonna do, X is gonna be insignificant. So, this 1.80 times 10 to the minus five, this comes off of that Ka table that we had um, earlier in class. Okay, so this is given to us, this 1.80 times 10 to the minus five. We don't know the acetate, we don't know the hydronium, but they're both X. And rather than writing X times X, I'm gonna put X squared, okay? 
And at equilibrium, the acetic acid is 0 0.100 minus X, but X is so small that it's not gonna change our answer. So we can just leave it as 0 0.100. Now the math is pretty easy. We wanna solve for X. Okay, well, the first thing we would do is get rid of the 0 0.100. We do that by multiplying both sides by 0 0.100. That'll give us x squared. Then to get x, we take the square root. Okay, so it's just some algebra. So we multiply both sides by 0 0.100 and then take the square root of both sides to get x by itself. And x equals 1.34 times 10 to the minus 3. And again, X equals the acetate ion concentration, but it also equals the hydronium ion concentration at equilibrium. And if we know the hydronium ion concentration, we can calculate the pH of the solution. So if we take the negative log of the hydronium ion concentration, we can figure out the pH of the solution. So now the pH of the solution is 2.873. Well, let's go ahead and compare that for a minute. Okay, when we looked at our hydrochloric acid, the pH was one. When we look at the acetic acid, the pH is 2.873. They're both the same original concentration of acid. But because the hydrochloric acid is a strong acid, it's going to generate more hydronium ions, which will in turn lower the pH. Because the acetic acid is a weaker acid, the hydronium ion concentration will be less than it was for the hydrochloric acid. And since the hydronium ion is less, the pH would be more. All right, so now we're just going to add um, just a, 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 an extra step into this. So it says, what is the pH at 25 degrees Celsius? And as long as we don't change the temperature, it doesn't have to do with the question. Of a solution obtained by dissolving 32.5 grams of um, acetyl salicylic acid, which is aspirin, in one liter of water, and it gives us the Ka for this acid. So the first thing we want to do is calculate the molarity. Okay, in the previous questions, we were always given what the concentration was. In this one, we're not. So we're kind of going backwards a little bit. And we have to remember how to calculate molarity. And molarity is moles of solute per liter of solution. But we have grams of solute and we have the formula so we can convert from grams to moles. And then once we know the moles of the um, solute, we can divide it by the volume. We're really divided by one, so it's gonna be the same number. And we wanna calculate what the molarity of the um, acetyl salicylic acid is before equilibrium is established. Okay, so I'm going to give you, this is a practice from chapters ago, way back at the beginning of the semester. Take 32.5 grams of HC9H7O4 and convert that to moles and then divide it by one liter and calculate the molarity. Don't go any further than that, but let's just figure out what the molarity is first. So I'm getting 0 0.180. So 32.5 grams, okay, the molar mass, remember we take um, on the periodic table, hydrogen times one, plus carbon times nine, plus hydrogen times seven, plus oxygen times four. That's where that 180.2 comes from. 
Okay, so we can convert from grams to moles. And then we're dividing by one. So the molarity equals the number of moles. All right, so we kind of just added an extra layer onto the problem. So what we want to do next is we want to write the acid ionization equation. Okay, now this H here is the acidic proton. This is the hydrogen that's going to be removed in water. Okay, so write the equation. Make sure your arrow goes in two directions. Figure out what your conjugate, base, and acid are for the acid ionization of aspirin. Don't go any further. Let's just do one step at a time. But write that equilibrium. Okay, so H, C9H7O4 plus H2O yields, now the conjugate base just has removed the H plus. So C9H7O4 minus plus that hydronium ion. Okay, so now we want to write our ice chart. This is the initial concentration of our aspirin. Okay, and there isn't any of the conjugate acid or base uh, on the product side. So write your ice chart. Okay, so 0 0.180. Sometimes the question just gives us this number. Sometimes we have to calculate it and that's just information from a previous chapter. And we don't have any of the conjugate base or the hydronium ion to begin with. A little bit of the acid is gonna go through that acid ionization. We're gonna produce a little bit of the conjugate base and a little bit of hydronium. Now notice I just didn't even put the minus X in here because it's gonna be insignificant. Okay, it's a weak acid. All right, so now we wanna write a K expression. Do that part next. Products over reactants raised to the power of the coefficient in the balanced equation. C9H7O4 minus plus hydronium over HC9H7O4. Okay, products over reactants. Water's not in here. Can't talk about water in terms of concentration, so it's not in there. Now, I'm going to tell you that the Ka for acetylsalicylic acid is 3.30 times 10 to the minus 5. Just like the 1.80 times 10 to the minus 5 um, came from a table, I gave it to you. I'm giving you this number. Okay. So x times x, that's where the x squared comes from, over 0 0.180. Technically, it's minus x, but the minus x is insignificant, so we're not going to include it. So math-wise, solve for x. How are you going to get x by itself? And practice plugging stuff into the calculator so that the calculator doesn't become you know, an issue on your test. Okay, so the negative log of 7.71 times 10 to the minus three. Okay, we've got three significant digits in the concentration, three decimal places in the pH, 2.113. Okay, do we see how these problems all have kind of the same backbone to them. There might be you know, little variations on what we have to do, but writing the equilibrium and writing the ice chart and writing the K expression are the components that will be in every question. So make sure you start from there and then you can figure out what you need to do from there. So now let's look at bases. Okay, so it tells us um, that we have a 0 0.20 molar aqueous solution of, this was actually that weak base that we looked at on the KB table before. Um, it's C6H5NH2. It's got that amine group in it. The nitrogen with the lone pairs of electrons tends to attract protons or hydrogen ions. That's what makes it a base. All right, well, it's a little bit different than when we were looking at weak acids, but not all that much. Really, the only thing that's going to be different is the base ionization equation we start with. OK, 
Okay, so here's our base. I would never expect that you know this formula. You'd be given those. So C6H5NH2, okay, there's our base. It's in solution, an aqueous solution. Okay, bases accept a proton or accept a hydrogen ion. So that means that in this case, the water is acting like the acid. So when the base accepts its proton, it forms the conjugate acid. So C6H5NH3 plus is our conjugate acid. And when the water acts like an acid and gives off its proton, we end up with hydroxide as the conjugate base. Now, the reason that this is a base is because it increases the hydroxide ion concentration. And by increasing the hydroxide ion, we decrease the hydronium ion concentration. And when we decrease the hydronium ion concentration, that increases the pH. Now, once we do this, really the steps involved are gonna be the same. We're gonna to wanna to make an ice chart. Okay, well, it's gonna look very similar to the ice charts we had before, Really, the only thing that's going to be different is what the initial concentration was. So the initial concentration of our weak base was 0 0.20. We have 0 and 0, so we're going to get 0 0.20 minus x. This x is going to be insignificant. x and x. Now, since this is a base, we're going to want to write a KB expression. It doesn't matter what kind of equilibrium expression we write. They're all written the same way, products over reactants. So write the KB expression for this equilibrium. Okay, so products over reactants. There should be brackets here, sorry. Raised to the power of the coefficient in the balance equation. Again, that water is not included there because it's a liquid. Now, KB, we can look up on a table. We actually looked this up on the table previous. And it's 4.20 times 10 to the minus 10. Remember, it was the weakest of those weak bases on that KB table from before. Now, the conjugate acid is X at equilibrium. The hydroxide is X at equilibrium. And the weak base is 0 0.20 minus X at equilibrium, but X is so small. 10 to the minus 10 means we're looking at a super weak base. This number X is so small relative to that original concentration that it's not gonna affect the math, the answer that we get. So once we get to that point, we wanna solve for X. So do the math and figure out mathematically what would X equal. And really the math becomes very similar problem to problem as well. Okay, we're gonna multiply both sides by 0.2. That'll give us X squared. Then take the square root of both sides and that'll give us X and practice it in your calculator. Make sure that you know how to take the square root of a number. You don't want the first time that you're doing it to be on your test. Here's another little difference. When we solve for X, X now equals hydroxide ion, okay? When we talk about weak bases, X will equal hydroxide. For acids, it equals hydronium. But for bases, it equals hydroxide. Now, we want to calculate the pH of the solution. Well, we know the hydroxide ion concentration. So think back to the warm up at the beginning of class and how we went from hydroxide ion to pH and calculate the pH for this base solution. 
So the negative log of 9.2 times 10 to the minus 6 equals 5.04. And then if we subtract that value from 14, that'll give us the pH. So every problem will be slightly different. If you start by writing the equilibrium and making an ice chart and writing a K expression, you'll be able to figure out what you need to do in the problem.